Hello, dear students. It's me again, your your subject professor, Professor Ray Joy Descalzo-Flora, uh, your professor for Soil Fertility Conservation and Management, or SST2. Today, we'll be discussing about historical background of soil fertility. This is the first lesson under Unit 1 of Module 1 of our Soil Fertility Conservation and Management subject. Actually, our subject is two modules. First module is, uh, we'll discuss about soil fertility management. And then second module is, uh, we'll be discussing about uh, soil conservation and management. And under module one, we have four, four units. First unit is, a, is the introduction. Second unit is um, about um, soil plant relationships. Third is evaluation of soil fertility. And fourth is uh, about problem soils. And under unit one, introduction, we have three lessons. First, we have the historical background of soil fertility. And then second lesson uh, is about the definition of soil, fer uh, soil fertility and productivity. And uh, third lesson will be discussing about um, the basic concepts in plant nutrition. So we'll start um, in the introduction in unit one. Uh, lesson one will speak, uh, will deal with the historical background of soil fertility. So why do we need to really visit the history of the soil? Uh, why do we need to, to familiarize the different people who were involved in the um, discovery of different knowledge and um, scientific discoveries about soil fertility? Well, Whatever we have enjoyed right now had been because of their works, of their discoveries. So it's really a, a good thing that we really have to know what had been done before, why we, uh, we were able to use different types of fertilizers, why we are able to different type, uh, use the, the different um, management practices that we are practicing right now so what had been the what was the situation before that triggered this uh, different scientists in, in looking at how the soil behaves in terms of producing crops so it's really very important that we know their contributions in that case we will be able to appreciate what they have done and what should be done to preserve our soils okay so let's move on so our objective for this lesson so after this lesson you have you are expected to familiarize the history of soil fertility and then you have to understand the his how, how the history started identify the place time and people who started the understanding of soil fertility. So the history of or the history of the study of soils is intimately tied to our urgent need to provide food for ourselves and forage for animals. The most important organism on earth are us, humans and animals. So those animals became our, our uh, provider for food apart from the plants because plants are producers so us as humans and animals are dependent on the crops so that's why it's the the soil the history of soils was really tied to our need for food or food security for humans and animals because animals are also our uh, source of food so without them we will be hungry also but without the plants itself 
we will be uh, start. Okay, so without history, civilizations have prospered or declined as a function of the availability and productivity of the soils. So if the soil is um, before um, they had experience before that the soil were not able to produce so much food for the people and some were able to um, enjoy the bounty of the uh, soil resources okay for the timeline of soil fertility management it actually started long long time ago so here a uh, Greek historian named Xenophon uh, was able to expound upon the merits of green manuring crops. So he actually existed, according to the history, 450 to 355 years before Christ. So during that period, during his, maybe when he is already um, mature enough to discover about the um, the behavior of the environment or particularly the soils he was able to to observe that green manuring can improve crop productivity so that was long time ago it's actually 2000 if you have to count that 2020 plus say before his death um we will put like three hundred fifty plus uh, two hundred two thousand twenty so we have two thousand three hundred seventy so two thousand three hundred seventy years ago there is already a knowledge about green manuring as a practice to improve the crop productivity so it's not new it, it had been a practice before that green manuring crops are good for for um, in, the, for the fertility of the soils. So that was the discovery of Xenophon. And then after him, we have Columella's husbandry. So it's actually Columella's husbandry is a book um, produced by um, Lucius Honius Moderatus Columbilla. He existed around 60 uh, um, Anno Domini or 80. So, in, during his period, the use of lime and that clover and alfalfa, well, alfalfa and clover are leguminous crops. And they are considered green manure because they fix nitrogen from the atmosphere. So, they contain um, more nitrogen compared to other crops so the use of lime and the clover and the alfalfa should be turned under when we speak about turned under it is being incorporated into the soil and was used by 15 generations or 450 years under the roman empire until its collapse so for 450 years the use of green manure like clover and alfalfa in the use of lime had been a practice before. So the use of lime is really uh, had been existing since uh, almost uh, 2020 years ago. Okay. So another one after that we have the fall of Rome the French Revolution. So we have that period started from 476 AD to 1799. So during that period, the knowledge of soil in agriculture was passed on from parent to child. As a result, crop yields were low. So during that period, imagine 1799 minus 476. It was 1,300 almost 1,300 years. So for 1,300 years, the um, the knowledge on soil and agriculture was 
does not change. Whenever they have uh, the generation uh, for from parent to child, so for that period, one thousand almost one thousand three hundred years, there is no changes in terms of the practices of reproduction. There is no new discoveries. So that is very significant for the growth of crop or to increase crop growth or productivity. So, but then there are, during that period, there are uh, scientists to try to understand the, the behavior of soils or understand how the soil provides nutrition for the crops. Okay, so, but then let us look at the different scientists who are involved during that period and after that in terms of uh, their discoveries and what are their the contributions to the discovery of soil fertility or to the uh, enhancement or preservation of soil fertility. Okay, so we will be talking about the scientists in the history of soils. So experiments into what made plants grow first led to the idea that the ash left behind when the plant matter was burned was the essential element. But they never, uh, but they overlooked the role of nitrogen, which is not left on the ground after combustion. So normally, if you burn the plants or burn any residue or organic residues, there are ashes. So we produce ash. So before, they thought that ash is the essential element because every time they burn, that was left on the ground. But it was said here that they overlooked the role of nitrogen. It's because nitrogen is very volatile. So every time you, you burn the residue, the nitrogen, which is one of the volatile, very volatile elements, goes to the atmosphere. So in that sense, normally, um, uh, the nitrogen is not um, included in the ashes. So that's why they overlook that kind of um, element. Okay, so John Baptist Van Helmont he existed uh, 1580 to 1644. Uh, He's actually a Flemish, uh, Flemish physician, philosopher, mystic, and chemist. And in about 1635, uh, he thought he had proven he had proven that water is an essential element because of his five-year experiment with a willow tree grown with only the addition of water. So within that five year period, you just add water and the willow tree grew, uh, grew. So he said the reason behind that is that the increase in the plant's weight had apparently been only by the addition of water with no reduction in the soil. So the willow tree grew but there is no reduction in the, the weight of the soil for a five year period. So that's why he thought that only the water is an essential element. So that was the thinking of John Baptist Von, uh, John Baptist Von Helmut during his um, experiment. Okay, another one, we have John Woodward. And John Woodward existed since 1665 to 1728. He is an English naturalist, antiquarian, and a geologist. So he experimented with various types of water ranging from clean to muddy. So maybe he has, uh, he planted a uh, crab on clean water, and then another one, uh, 
quite mighty and then another one maybe so uh, mighty so he experimented on the different types of water and then he found out that mighty water uh, found that muddy water was the best and so he concluded that earthy matter was the essential element so that was his conclusion during the experiment that he conducted during the period okay so their um, experiments was then included uh, during the um, fall of Rome until the French Revolution Jethro Tull. So we have 1674 to 1741. So he's an English naturalist, antiquarian, and geologist. So he demonstrated that it was beneficial to cultivate or steer the soil. So for him, steering is very beneficial for the soil. But his opinion that uh, the steering made the fine parts of the soil available for plant absorption was erroneous. He believed, Jethro Tull believes, that the fine parts of the soil or the dust possibly, uh, he believes that it is be being taken up or absorbed by the plants. So that was his um, his belief or his opinion. So he believes that the plant absorbs the fine parts of the soil. Okay, then we have Anton Laurent de Lavasha. Well, it's actually quite difficult to, to pronounce because it's, it's a French word, but it uh, based on the uh, pronunciation, it is pronounced as Antoine. Antoine. Laurent de Levocha. Okay, so he existed in 1743 to 1794. He's actually a French chemist. So in the year 1770, he showed that plants and animals must combust oxygen internally to live and was able to deduce that most of the 165 pound weight of Van Helmer's willow tree was derived from the air. So according to the study of Van Helmont, he said that water is the um, essential element. However, for uh, Antoine Van uh, Antoine Laurent de Levasha, he um, concluded that 165 pounds of the weight of the willow tree was derived from the air. So that was his uh, observation. And then another one, then we have Jean Baptiste of Vosinga. Well, actually, it's also a French word. So Jean Baptiste of Vosinga. So he existed in 1802 to 1887. So he is a French agriculturist or agricultural chemist or French agriculturist and the chemist. So he obtained evidence showing that the main source of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen for plants were the air and water. So he is the first one to discover that carbon, hydrogen and oxygen were taken from the air and water. Then we have Justus, Justus, um, as they um, pronounce that in German. So, Justus of uh, Bon Libe. So, he existed in 1803 to 1873. So, he is a German chemist. He published a book, Organic Chemistry and its Application to Agriculture and Physiology, in 1840. So, imagine that it's he is really a brilliant man because long time ago he has really um, discovered what we are enjoying right now. So he asserted that chemicals and plants must have come from the soil and the air. 
so that was his discovery and to maintain soil fertility he used uh, minerals uh, to maintain fertility, uh, soil fertility the used minerals must be replaced so he said that minerals should be replaced whenever the plant take it from the soil so uh, and the concept that he is uh, form, uh, that he had formulated before we are now using it this days so we are also applying it this, in this days until now so he believed that nitrogen was supplied from the air and that was true because he also was the one who discovered that nitrogen was taken from the air and then he laid the foundation of the modern fertilizer industry because of uh, because he said without uh, even the the most of the elements are present but one element is um, limiting so the plant will not really grow well so that's why we uh, we made that also as a basis in applying uh, fertilizers to the crops right now so that's why he is the one who really laid the foundation of the modern fertilizer industry and he is the one who developed or formulated the law of the minimum which i mentioned a while ago that even if other elements are present but one element is limiting the crop growth uh, the growth of the crop will not really uh, grow well or the crop will crop um, standing will be poor or the growth of the crop will be poor so that's it okay then we have alexander von uh, humboldt so he is also a german explorer and naturalist who existed since 1769 to 1859 so he rediscovered the enrichment of soil with guano by the incas in 1802 and then his discovery led to the mining of guano and the Chilean nitrate and its application to soil in the United States and Europe after 1840 so he discovered that guano is really very important in uh, soil fertility during that time okay then we have Joseph Henry Gilbert who existed in 1817 and 1901 he is a British chemist together with John Bennett Lowe's um, who existed in 1814 to 1900 and he is actually an English agronomist both of them discovered that plants took nitrogen from the soil so in their experiment uh, they discovered that plants took nitrogen from the soil so their investigations also produced the superphosphate that we are using also uh, right now so their discovery also led to the invention and use of potassium nitrogen and nitrogen as fertilizers and then ammonia generated by the production of coke was also recovered and used as fertilizers because of them and chemical basis of nutrients delivered to the soil in manure was understood because of their discovery. Okay, so then we have um, Hermine Hilrigil. So Hermine Hilrigil, um, he existed in 1831 to 1895. He's, an, he's a German agricultural chemist and then Martinus uh, Bajerink Bajerink Martinus Bajerink he existed in, since 1851 to 1931 and he's a Dutch microbiologist and botanist so both of them took together simultaneously uh, discovered the symbiosis of bacteria and leg uh, leguminous roots 
or leguminous roots and the fixation of nitrogen by bacteria in the 19th century. And then we have Thomas or J. T. Uh, J. Thomas Wick. He is actually a consulting chemist to the Royal Agricultural Society in England. I don't have a photo of him because I even if I search uh, several times in the internet, if I can find his photo, I can uh, I could hardly see uh, a single photo of him, so I just pasted his name in the box. So in 1856, he discovered that ammonia contained in fertilizers was transformed into nitrates. So that was nitrification, right? So ammonia to nitrate, ammonia to nitrate. So uh, it's the nitrification process. He discovered that. So that was in 1856. So imagine how how brilliant these people are. And now we are just enjoying what they have discovered before. So those people that we have um, learned are so brilliant because um, the discoveries that they have uh, provided for us made us um, comfortable and easier for us in terms of management of the soils. So then we have here they considered or he considered as he was considered as the father of soil chemistry and carried out a remarkable group of experiments on the ability of soils to exchange ions. Then he found that excuse me that soils could absorb both cations and anions and that these ions could be exchanged with other ions. So he is the one who discovered the cation exchange or cation exchange or cation exchange capacity. So, these are the discovery of J. Thomas Way. And then we have Robert Warrington. So, Robert Warrington existed in 1838 to 1907. So, he is actually an agricultural chemist. He proved that this transformation of ammonia into nitrates was done by living organisms. So he proved the transformation of ammonia into nitrates, what we call nitrification, was done by living organisms. So he is the one who discovered that also. Okay. So we have here another one, Sir He. Venogradsky. So it's he is a French, uh, Russian French uh, scientist. So he is a microbiologist, ecologist, and soil scientist. So in 1980, uh, in 1890, he announced that he found the bacteria responsible for the transformation of ammonia to nitrates. Let's look back to the discovery of Robert W. Warrington in 1838. said here that mm, ammonia into nitrates was done by living organisms so it's right and he it was supported by Sergei Venogradsky who also announced that he found the bacteria responsible for the transformation of ammonia to nitrates so and now possibly he discovered that the Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter. So those are the bacteria who is involved in the um, um, nitrification process. So discoveries uh, concerning the physiology of the processes of nitrification and nitrogen fixation by cell bacteria helped to establish bacteriology as a major biological science. Okay, then we have crop rotation, mechanization, chemical and natural fertilizers led to a doubling of wheat yields in Western Europe between 1800 and 1900. And even until now, we are enjoying the, the benefits 
of those discoveries that they had before. So we are now using different types of fertilizers. We are also applying the different concepts that they found before. And until now, we are using that to support our, our findings in different researches and different uh, production uh, systems that we have in agriculture. So they are really so important for us. They have placed a significant um, contribution in the history of soils and in the history of humankind. So let us appreciate their contribution and their, their place in the history. So those are the, these are the references that I used in lesson one. So I hope you can find those references, particularly those uh, that uh, are sourced out from the internet. So you can look at that. Uh, but then um, those books that I placed here was taken from the library. So, you cannot access this, that actually because it's in the library. But then, you can access the different sites that I placed in the references. So, I hope uh, you have learned something or you have learned a lot from the lesson that I discussed today. So, enjoy your day and I will be sending to you on or assessment uh, that you have watched the uh, lecture video that I shared with you. So thank you so much. Always stay safe and God bless everyone. Enjoy learning.